What is it about war movies that drive you the most crazy? <sighs> the fact that almost everything in them is inaccurate. Almost everything? The biggest thing that drives me fucking crazy is when grenades create a fireball. <laughs> <laughs> really? Well, yeah, because it happens in like every movie. They throw a grenade and a 55-gallon drum of gasoline explodes. Right. And people go flying backwards and cars flip over. If you throw a grenade, it goes pop, and it puts some dust up in the air. And if you're waiting for the fireball, you're going to be there for the rest of your natural life. <laughs> it's just not going. <laughs> and they're not that effective. They're fun, don't get me wrong, but they're not that effective. I did not know that they don't like, create a fireball. No. I've never seen a grenade go off, obviously. It, I'm sure Jamie can pull one up. It just goes, poof, it's dust. Is well, all I think it is. I've seen one in a video. Of them I'm going. sure for a moment, like the momentary explosion, there is a flash. But other than that, it's literally mm. just dust flying up in the air. What What is the best military movie that's the most accurate or the, mo the least offensive? Navy SEALs starring Charlie Sheen. Really? No, not at all. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I almost fell down. <laughs> that fucking guy probably fooled more people into coming into the SEAL teams than anybody else. Really? Oh, my God. Really? Yeah. I mean, he's fallen through skylights with MP5s and handlebar mustaches. You know, there's snipers calling himself God. I can't see anything. I'm switching to starlight, blasting people through a concrete wall. They're doing free fall jumps. They're in submarines. Like, that's an entire 30-year career to do all that shit in 60 minutes. <laughs> like, you take that expectation. You come to the team. You're like, God, I'm kind of bored right now. So is that the war area? Is there Charlie is. Sheen. Oh, bang, it. bang, bang, bang. Look at him. Mm. I'm going to run, boys. Yep. I want to make it. And he's got the the the, the, the requisite... Uh, scarf around the neck and you first have off have one of those so what kind of asshole wears a red scarf in an environment where there's no red yeah, he's got green it. utilities on from vietnam yeah, wearing what? a red uh that shamal guy. yeah this is so hilarious so another one especially that, when you know charlie now like such oh, a God. fucking psychotic partier and so apparently <laughs> apparently so they came to the buds compound and did a little bit of training with the guys and I guess there were some bathroom breaks, and they'd just be like, all right, you guys ready for some more PT? Oh, really? <laughs> that makes sense. I'm obviously hearing that 18th hand, but I want to believe it's true. Well, you know who I hear trains diligently and really hard uh, and it, like takes it super seriously and is like one of the most humble guys you ever meet is Keanu Reeves. That doesn't surprise me. I, yeah, it doesn't surprise me either, but I heard some people that have uh, had interacted with him when he was training for- um, John Wick? In yeah, including- uh, my jiu-jitsu instructor, John Jock Machado, my yep. friend Higa Machado's John Jock's brother, and a, a bunch of other. He, he worked out with a bunch of other Machados, in fact. I think Carlos as well. Uh, but you know, he really wanted to learn actual jiu-jitsu, so he really and did shooting. train with them. Yeah, he did real tactical courses, and and so his uh, his tactical proficiency shows in that movie. And so to get back to stuff that bothers me, it's the 72-round pistol magazine. Uh, yes. Because yes. I'm counting. I'm like, that's 15. <laughs> oh, 25, 30. Uh, <laughs> or the shotgun that has 48 rounds in it. So like, I can't do it. I'm like throwing stuff at the TV. My wife just points. She says, get out. Like, yeah. it's, I can't do it. <laughs> like, so Sicario, I love Sicario. There's a scene at the border that has one of the most blatant uh, – just errors in the movie there's a guy pointing a gun he's a, supposedly a, a cia agent he's pointing a gun out the windshield and you can see that the bolt to the rifle is locked to the rear oh no which means the armor on set handed it to him you know clear and safe and he just went and they filmed it and nobody caught it and i saw that movie i'm like turn that shit off i can't watch it anymore. of course yeah <laughs> it ruins it for me now, why don't they fix stuff like that? You would think that you're making a movie about military or about guns. Like, yeah. The, they didn't the catch real it. gun nuts are going to notice that. They, but they probably didn't catch it in the editing process. It's so fast. It's probably up there for three seconds. But if you know – I mean, I you, you look at a gun and, and like, you just if, – if it was your – primary tool for years you're gonna mm -hmm. you're looking for certain things all the here time yep here we go look for someone who doesn't know though it looks super serious well that's why they're still watching the movie and i left yeah. <laughs> yep bolt to the rear ah there see it that is. Yep. walk to the rear yeah go ahead and pull the trigger there go ahead son <laughs> <That shit ain't> <laughs> <laughs> obviously an empty magazine yeah hey silly yeah <laughs> So nobody caught that in the editing process is How what it is. How the fuck did they not see that? No, don't you think they digitally could have moved that forward? They 100% could have moved it because he didn't yeah. fire in that scene anyway. Yeah, just push that bitch up. Just Photoshop that sucker. 
I gotta get. Anxiety I mean, they can use. <laughs> you get angry. Right? It makes sense. <laughs> hey, man, in a way less significant thing, I get crazy when I watch people play pool in movies that obviously can't play. Oh, I can drives imagine. me nuts. Yes, drives me nuts. Like if I see someone like it's supposed to be some pool hustler, and I see so they have a bullshit bridge and they're ha- <laughs> they're gripping the <laughs> like you can see things in movies like uh, my friends who smoke cigarettes say they can tell when someone doesn't smoke. Oh, for sure. Yeah, because when you smoke, there's just a, like a casual, real, relaxed way that you're holding the cigarette and the way you're drawing it. But when someone's like, never smoked before, and they're like, mm, yeah. they've got this weird thing they're doing. Like, oh, that guy doesn't really smoke. I'm like, how the fuck can you tell? Because like, I smoke. It's a, like another thing that bugs me is you watch any, any tactical scene where they're like moving down a hallway. Mm-hmm. And it's like, why is your gun pointed at your buddy's face? Like, that's not right. cool. <laughs> yes. Why are you yes. aiming across? Yeah. Like, and then the, the way that they make entry into rooms, it's like awesome. I like to play Russian roulette with my life as well. Like, it just drives me absolutely. What about bad. Zero Dark Thirty? That movie fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> what sucks about it? You know what drove me crazy that that How lady, much time do we have? that redhead lady, was yelling at all those train killers. I was like, I don't think they'd listen to her. There gonna... are some creative liberties that are taken in that movie from soup to nuts. I yeah. mean, like, was that person the lady who yelled at those guys? The one, the woman who's in charge, was that a real human in real life? It was based off of a real human for sure. Like uh, a lot of the things in that movie were based on real events. However, if you're trying to get tickets to get people seats, you know their butts and seats, mm-hmm. you got to glamorize stuff. Right. So a lot of people, because in that movie, you know the um, the source drives up in the vehicle and detonates himself. That yeah. actually happened. That killed a bunch of people in Kaust. Um, if as long as you look at it as entertainment, that movie is okay. If you look at it with a refined eye, like are they doing this correctly? No. Mm. they're all gonna die yeah <laughs> i mean it's uh it just I, I, we would need another four hours to literally go down the list of things but it's just things are compressed things that would never happen happen for the sake of creating uh, an, an an intoxicating or uh, uh emotional scene on camera and it's tough to watch because i'm sitting there i'm like get out of the door get out of the door get out of the door i'm getting anxiety watching these damn movies because <sighs> you don't hang out in front of open doors unless you want to get shot. Now, how many different things were fucked up about that movie? Uh, ju- only the things that were after the opening scene. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole movie is a disaster. Yeah, it's just, don't, I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> a dumbass like myself, I'm like, That's a good fucking movie. Seems pretty realistic. To, well, think about it from entertainment. It's yeah. a great entertaining movie. Right. You could ask the same question about the movie American Sniper or Lone Survivor. They're all based around certain things that have been enhance to make it more entertaining yes and be, and, and i get it they're there to make money they're not there to tell historically accurate do you know tale. marcus uh, i do not know marcus well but i do know marcus I, I'm, I, I know him i don't know how he felt i don't know if you'd ever say he was know, involved he with the making of the it. movie yeah but i mean i'm sure they only listened to him so much you know yeah uh given how i can again having not been there and i can only imagine how horrific that incident must be for him to deal with on a daily level, I would bet he wasn't very involved. Hmm. I would almost rather them, if that was me, I think I would almost rather say, you know what? Just make the movie that you want to make because I don't want to sit here and explain exactly what happened and recreate these scenes and Hmm. talk about how this person died over here. Like I would just just go, you know, go to town. Is there any movie that you've ever seen about war where you go, that, that makes sense? First 10 minutes of Saving Private Ryan is unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Not for accuracy, for capturing the essence of what it feels like and the switch between utter fear to excitement to joy to anger in the matter of a second. Another movie that does a good aspect or a good job of capturing capturing some of those aspects, I would say, is also Black Hawk Down. Not for accuracy, but to capture the chaos have how a plan can come unraveled and how just how chaotic it can be and that's how sometimes you can feel so helpless but your only solution is to drive into the problem instead of moving away from it so those those capture the essence of it well from a technical perspective i honestly cannot think of a single movie that does it justice wow it would have to be like a 50 hour movie though because of course i mean 
Black Hawk Down, I think, was a multiple day incident, and that movie is 90 minutes. Right. So they get rid of all the, the boring BS stuff that is actually what you do the vast majority of your job. If I look at my career, probably greater than 95% of my career, I spent training and 5% I spent in combat. Really? Yep. And that is that is average. I would say there are people who are maybe a little bit higher and people who are a little bit lower. But you're not going to spend more than at most maybe 10% of your career in combat, even if your job is directly tied to combat. Because you got to train. you got to plan the missions. I mean, our, our normal planning cycle was 24 to 72 hours. Sitting in front of PowerPoint, considering whether or not I should hang myself or blow my brains out because we're arguing over the font that we're using to submit for mission approval. Really? Oh, you're studying the weather. You're studying the terrain. I've had slides and mission briefs sent back not be approved because I didn't orient the helicopter the correct direction on the slide. They're like, hey, you need to fix this and then resubmit it. Like if you wanted to shut down the average day military, it wouldn't be through a kinetic act. You would need to put some type of code into Microsoft Office and we're done. Because we operate on Microsoft PowerPoint, Microsoft Word, and Microsoft Office. We'd sit there and we'd plan and we would brief and we'd submit for approval. That's three days. Then you'd go do an objective that would last for 10 hours. Whoa. Repe repeat the cycle. I'm too ADD for that. It's Well, it, well you break up the tasks. So each like, the last thing you would want is one person creating the entire plan. So somebody's doing the communication plan, the medevac plan, the insertion plan, the route planning. You, we don't ever really brief what we're going to do inside of the objective because that's kind of the soup and nuts that you train for at all times like that's everything is to get there and then okay that's actually our job but we focus on all those other things then primary secondary tertiary plan for each one of those things phase lines for each one of those things none of that has ever shown up in any movie uh what doesn't show up in any movies is vast majority of time the intelligence is bad and you hit what's called a dry hole you go to a building you approach the structure you breach the door and it's just the intelligence is wrong it's either empty or it's the wrong person that happens all the time that doesn't it's not exciting though so we pay the people money they fix their door and we go back and we try to find the person again none of that shows up in any of the mediums because it's too they're too compressed 